conflict tourism is a burgeoning new genre of online content that I am really interested in. Good morning, guys, from Kabul, Afghanistan. We are leaving the capital city and heading to the north, into the mountains of Afghanistan. It is incredibly exciting. People basically go to areas where you shouldn't go to because it's so dangerous. Visiting Yemen as a tourist is more dangerous than Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, and Syria. Put it this way, I've never been more scared in my life to get kidnapped than my week-long journey across mainland Yemen. And then they just kind of vlog it. Join me as we make our way now to Syria. It's like really simple. It's not really journalism necessarily. It's not like a, a journalist going to ground zero in the middle of a, a firefight or anything like that. We are entering the Polisharki prison with the... When the group entered the Afghan capital, they came into this facility and freed thousands of their fellow fighters. Those things actually should not be conflated at all. This is conflict tourism. It's a little bit different. What's up, people? Another day here in Tijuana. Uh, right now, I'm in the central district, pretty touristy area. Normal people want to witness the grandeur of the pyramids or the Amazonian rainforest, potentially Chechen Itza, maybe even the Taj Mohal. Then there are those who tour the less beautiful aspects of human civilization. Today, we've gained access to one of four gangs that are constantly fighting for power in the Rio de Janeiro region. And they're showing us their entire operation. And a lot of these guys are YouTubers and those are conflict tourists. Okay, that's basically it. So, and also, most likely, where the market's military surplus place and there's an underground black market where you can buy guns, weapons, everything. We'll show the photos on screen now. But the thing is, huh, the, the few photos we yeah. did take, I couldn't take many. Yeah, <laughs> because we can only stay there for about 10 minutes before people start chatting and going, these people don't belong. And then there's me who goes down to Branch in Missouri to visit the Who Done It Halloween Murder Mystery Dinner Experience every single year with my family in tow in my RV. And we go down there and we have a hell of a good time. I don't actually go there. That's just that's just kind of funny, though, to say that. You know, and lie. It's a real thing, though, by the way. These fellas are insane. They go live with the cartel. For the next 100 hours, I will be living with the most dangerous cartel in the entire world. The only thing the world knows about these guys is that they're some of the most ruthless killers that exist. They go to the most dangerous cities or parts of large cities that are known for crime rates. The place we're going to go to is called Tepito, or colloquially as the Barrio Bravo the fierce neighborhood. Or they just go to war-torn areas. Welcome back to Kharkiv. You can see behind me, this building was bombed less than 24 hours ago, yesterday afternoon. The main guy we'll be talking about today because he's fucking been in the news for recently being kidnapped is your fellow Arab. He went to the cartel and hung out with them. For the sake of documenting a never before heard story, over the next five days, I dance with death. As we climb the ranks of the cartel in part one two and three and amongst many more he's just chilling with the cartel that's awesome man i i love that that's great we survived the first four days they'll allow me to interview one of the world's deadliest hitmen a cartel sicario hidden deep in the jungles of michoacan one of mexico's deadliest states there are other fellas on youtube like this guy inside barcelona's dangerous tourist zone 300 robberies a day so i went to ukraine during the war walking ukraine's destroyed streets in war beyond words seems kind of this seems kind of weird to me like this the, the ukraine thing seems kind of bizarre but i don't know once again there's a massive difference between youtubers going to war-torn areas to vlog Just look at this building a beautiful historical building here just torn to shreds and people who are reporting on conflicts. This is a missile attack on, on Palestine Tower, right in the middle of Gaza City. Yumna, take a moment to breathe. Take a moment, you and your team. Now, if you wanna do this yourself, <laughs> Here's a list of a, a bunch of fun places you could take you and your, your family vlogging channel to to get some really good content. Have a nice stay in South Sudan or Burkina Faso or even Venezuela or Syria or Libya or Sudan, the normal part of Sudan or Yemen or Iran or Burma or whatever. Make sure you vlog it though and upload it to YouTube. Just kidding. Don't do that. 
at all. Please, for the love of God. Not all these fellas are created equally, and I would say the two most renowned are Lord Miles and your fellow Arab. And when I say not all these guys are created equally, some of them try to provide genuine insights into the lives of these communities, and they just don't care about their own safety as much. It's really entertaining and it's difficult to you know not respect it because they're putting themselves out there and like there's way easier ways to make money and stuff and then there's other people who are just worshiping the almighty dollar and yeah we'll be talking about all this today there's nothing wrong with either one of those things by the way you can worship whoever you want even if it's a dollar. E pluribus unum. Am I right, fellow Americans? Like I said, the main focus of today's video will be highlighting your fellow Arab. Today, we're on the border of Lebanon and Syria. Referred to as one of the most dangerous borders in the world, it houses thousands of Syrian refugees right inside its boundaries. The small town of Arsel used to be occupied by and contains miles of tents of families that have escaped their war-torn country in hopes to build a better life in the beautiful nation of Lebanon. A man who was recently kidnapped by the alleged cannibal gangs of Haiti. This man is known as Addison Malouf, or your fellow Arab. Also, I really want to talk about Lord Miles. He's absolutely legendary as well. We'll talk about him later, though. Arab has been in the news a lot recently because he was kidnapped in Haiti. If you don't know what's going on in Haiti, I don't know either. The last elected president of Haiti Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated on the 7th of July, 2021. The killing plunged the country into political, humanitarian and security chaos. In the absence of a functioning government and with a limited police force, rival gangs have increasingly seized control of most of the capital, Port-au-Prince, and more than half of the country. It's f***ing insane and I cannot begin to understand how scary it must be to be a Haitian. The crisis in Haiti is getting worse. About 80% of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, is now in control of gangs. An estimated 1,500 people have been killed in the violence so far. There are 200 active gangs currently in Haiti, uh, according to Al Jazeera, half of which are present in the nation's capital. And of that capital, 80% is controlled by said gangs. Currently, there are around 200 gangs operating across the country with many in the capital, Port-au-Prince, controlling large parts of Haiti's economy. They profit from kidnapping, raiding businesses, as well as food, fuel, and other supplies. They have also taken control of key infrastructure, drawing income from customs, water and electricity, and even bus services. Plus, Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced that he was stepping down, and that's not really helping things, to be honest. I kid couldn't imagine he chose a successor. I just can't. It's so f***ing crazy that all this shit's going on right now. The situation is so bad in Haiti that there is a level four do not travel, travel advisory for there because of their wide, widespread kidnapping, ransoming, etc., etc. Haiti has been bad for years, but this is a new development. There is now no elected controlling authority at all. Some countries are actively considering sending in foreign soldiers to impose order. The gangs that are in Haiti have become fairly notorious. I've heard my friends talking about barbecue. He's a cannibal gang leader, apparently. Shit is insane down there. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've seen some crazy videos that I just keep getting showed on Twitter, and I don't want to be shown any of that stuff anymore. I don't like it. I don't like it. I want to be, I want to be ignorant again. Give me back my innocence, you f***s. All sorts of crazy information continues to circulate anywhere online that you can find anybody talking about uh, Haiti, especially if Ian Miles Chong's involved. There are cannibal gangs in Haiti who abducted eat people. We're not supposed to talk about that because of cultural relativism. The entire country is now under a state of chaos after gangs attacked. I don't even know, dude. This fellow barbecue is really interesting though, and he's a massive piece of shit, TBH. I can say that because I don't plan on going to Haiti at any point soon. If I did, I'd probably get kidnapped, maybe even eaten. Barbecue is the leader of the revolutionary forces of the G9 family and allies. That's the gang, G9 for short. Jimmy Chirizier is a former policeman. He's under sanctions from the UK for his actions here. But he does remain one of the most powerful people in Haiti today, and he doesn't like being interrupted. Hey! 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 Barbecue used to be a police officer, but now he's a warlord in Haiti. Kind of a natural progression of things, maybe. Bro basically runs the North Atlantic Trade Organization of Haitian gangs. Over a dozen gangs fall under the G9 family and allies umbrella. Barbecue is the leader of one of a collective of gangs called the G9. 
They are very powerful, but not powerful enough to take on the other 91 gangs. His notoriety, by the way, the reason I've heard just my friends and you know around me talking about him is because of a, a bunch of conspiracies. There's a bunch of crazy information, a bunch of larger than life crazy shit, uh, like the fact that he's a Freemason. There are images of him wearing a Freemason necklace. Is he actually a Freemason? I don't know. Or the fact that he's called Barbecue because he cooks and eats his enemies. I don't know if that's true either. All I can feel is just sadness for the people of Haiti. Why is he called Barbecue? He denies he's earned his nickname due to a penchant for burning his opponents alive. He's claiming that his nickname comes from his mother who was selling roasted chicken on the streets of Haiti. Um, again, there are the conflicting reports um, about that. And we know that he's ruthless, so there's no question. And, and why he's so important is also that because he's also playing the political game and he's definitely playing the PR game. This whole fucking thing sucks. I can't imagine having a guy named Barbecue with this kind of mythology around him. It's, it's insane. It's unbelievable. The whole cannibal rumor thing seems to stem from instances from several years ago where gang members would bite human flesh. That's kind of what we could find to scare rival gangs or to just intimidate locals into obedience. They wouldn't actually consume the flesh, according to NBC. So believe that if you will. I have no idea. I've seen some videos of people getting eaten. I'm going to be honest. Apparently, it's all part of propaganda campaigns. Everything's a part of a fucking propaganda campaign, seems like. There's also a conspiracy that he's called Barbecue because he tortures his enemies. This guy, by the way, is the guy that your fellow Arab uh, wanted to go to Haiti to meet and interview. That's bold. Very, very, very bold. And it seems like the perfect fit of content, judging by his past, his past videos where he li lived with the Mexican cartel. Shit is wild, bro. Arab also went to Varanasi, India, where they burn human bodies in public, which is a pretty wild practice. We just walked by burning bodies. Uh, I don't know if you were able to see it in the footage. We're going to try to do another round to get it better, but it was honestly quite disgusting they don't do that that much where i live so meeting barbecue the leader of a gang that supposedly burns and cooks and eats people seems like the next logical step beyond the the cartel it didn't go so well according to some headlines and according to some insider information that i received because we have a lot of mutual friends me and arab not a good headline to read especially if you're his mom or family member that's pretty bad by the way turns out wasn't kidnapped by G9 or any of the family or allies. He was kidnapped by a rival gang, a gang by the name of 400 Mawozo. I think that's how you say it. I'm not exactly sure. Now, to be clear, 400 Mawozo and G9 did have a fairly significant conflict back in 2022. They are not on good terms. From April to May of 2022, over 140 people were killed in gang conflicts. Arab was held for a ransom, as one usually is when... They can be. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there should be more ransoms out there for YouTubers. I'm not sure, though. The asking price for a YouTube journalist of his caliber was $600,000. Pretty reasonable. I'm going to be honest. It's a lot of money, but at the same time, you know, he's worth more than that, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't know if you can put a price on a human life. You can talk cheap. Lives are cheaper. Seems like. So Arab was kidnapped under the order of Lanmo 100 Zhao, or real name Joseph Wilson, or that's his alias, I guess. His real name is uh, Lanmo San Zhao. Sanju, I don't know how the f to say it. I don't really care, but correct me down below, please. This dude is wanted by the FBI, which is pretty funny. The United States Department of State's Transnational Organized Crime Rewards Program is offering a reward of up to 1 million USD for information leading to the arrest. And dude, if I was his confidant, I'd throw that. That's more than the f***ing, the damn $600,000 to free air. Sanju has medical issues with his kidneys. Oh, he's like EDP. Since his kidnapping, he has been released, fortunately, and he has yet to upload a video to his channel. I'm sure it's going to be f***ing insane when it comes out because he filmed all that shit and he befriended them. And there's some clips out there. It's, it's, it's wild, dude. I expect we'll see a pretty f***ing insane youtube collaboration of 400 mawozo and arabs hunt for barbecue so all the videos and everything we have is sourced from twitter and they are reposts of a bunch of other shit because it's really hard to find the original posts from content that comes directly from 400 mawozo and the leader lanmo 100 jew all right i don't know where he's posting from but arab was released by 400 mawozo supposedly without ransom not six hundred thousand dollars nothing was paid we see them together on a casting couch in a video that was 
supposedly uploaded by Lanmo himself. He seems like an all right guy. We do know that Arab was released on March 30th because he tweeted saying such. He said, cameraman never dies, funny meme. I've been released, glory be to God, Christ is king. He also says the following. I was kidnapped purely for the color of my skin. I was kidnapped for being a blanc. Can't give any more detail till I'm home, but all I will say for now is glory be to God. Released between Good Friday and Easter, Christ is king. When you are kidnapped in the middle of the Haitian desert, 60 minutes away from any civilization in a concrete shack surrounded by barbed wire, you don't pray to a rainbow flag. You pray to God. That is just so, such a funny thing to me to just throw in your tweet of you went to go interview barbecue a Haitian gang leader, you got kidnapped, and then you get homophobic <laughs> when you release. Like I don't really, I don't really give a. Whatever anybody believes, obviously. If you want to pray to a fucking rainbow flag, you can. If you want to pray to God, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But that shit is funny, right? That's funny. He's very obviously grateful to be free. And it's hard, you know, I respect that. I would be as well. You can tell probably by the rainbow flag comment that this comment overall received quite a bit of criticism. We start with the, the fact that there really isn't a desert in Haiti. The closest thing would be a savanna. Apparently, some geniuses, some biome experts. It's just an area that's semi-arid and hot. It's not really a desert. One, there's no desert in Haiti. Two, eat shit. These people just wanted him to die, it seems like. I'm not really sure. To me, I'd say it's completely forgivable to say desert. I don't really know. I don't really... I would... I'm not sure. If it really matters, he was still kidnapped, it seems like. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe it was a stunt. Maybe it was fake. Who knows? It's good views. It's good content. He, he made headlines. He crossed into the mainstream. It'd be genius. You could befriend a Haitian gang leader. Maybe you go in there, you go to Haiti, and you're just like, hey, dude, I'll give you 500 grand if you pretend to kidnap me for a while. That seems risky, though. A lot of people also think it's scripted because it seemed like he befriended the gang members. There was a video that was posted to TikTok by the gang leader, I think. I, I don't really know. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Comment vous encore? Ah, moi posé. Posé. Le mot son jour, pas grand jour. Braquille. Braquille. Pas non, 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 braquille. Buy a plan, buy a plan. It showed that even though Arab was kidnapped, he was treated as a friend and was taken care of. He was smoking a cigar, drinking a beer. He's got a bed and some homies. All right. It's all a man needs out in the deserts of Haiti. Haiti. I am currently kidnapped in the middle of nowhere, Haiti. But we're friends. We're homies. Cheers. He gave me a cigar, beer. I got my own bed. Okay. He does ask for permission to step outside because the cigar is burning down pretty low, which is funny. I need to uh, empty this. Okay, can, I, can I step outside, King, to empty this? No, Arab also says in the video that nobody else in Haiti gets kidnapped and then befriends the kidnappers. That's probably true and very fucked up and very sad because a lot of people do get kidnapped in Haiti. Yeah, nobody else, by the way, is getting kidnapped in Haiti and befriending them, even though they're demanding ransom. Cheers. There were hundreds of kidnappings in 2023, and I assume we're trending the same way in 2024 with all this stuff continu continuously getting worse. It kind of reminds me of Barrett in Starfield when he gets kidnapped by the pirates and then befriends them. Holy shit, you actually found me. By the way, who the f plays that game? I was playing that shit for about 40 hours and realized that I wasn't having fun, and I was like, man, what a letdown. Holy shit. After Arab was released by his friends in 400 Mawozo, he was then jailed by people in Haiti who were trying to scam him. I'm in jail right now. I was supposed to get on the flight. I was gonna end the video off of that helicopter. I have... The guys who we rented the car from saw me in the airport after the helicopter. And even though we had already agreed on a way to return it, they decided they're gonna come jail me. And they're gonna request thousands of dollars for a car that's broken. Complete shithole of a car. He deleted this video though, because in it he says, Haiti is the worst country I've ever seen in my entire life and i've been to 60 countries there's 195 if you guys didn't know do not ever come to haiti haiti is the worst shithole country i've ever seen in my entire life okay i'm telling you right now do not if you are thinking of ever coming to this goddamn country haiti is the worst country i have ever seen in my entire fucking life 
and I've been to 60 countries. He deleted the video and then clarified his, his thoughts. He was rude. A lot of people thought he was very rude. And that in tune with the first rude comedy made about the rainbow flag, people weren't having it on Twitter. Just wanted to make something clear about a video that I posted hating on Haiti. I have dozens of videos talking about how this is the most beautiful country in the world. I have told my family that when things get better, I want to come back here and visit. And I spent the last 36 hours meeting with many families here in their homes and full of gratitude. I posted that video about how it is a horrible country because of what I have been through. After everything, I was peacefully leaving and someone tried to extort me again, and now I'm detained for no reason and no explanation, and my family was expecting me to show up tonight and see them after 17 days of being kidnapped by 400 Mawozo. Forgive me for coming off as frustrated. I love Haiti and all of its beauty. I hope the next time I come back, I can be shown around properly and show the beautiful parts of the, the country and everything. My love to Haiti and its people that deserve a better situation. I agree with that 100%, and that seems perfectly reasonable because, you know, you can't control the fucking gangs that are... Uh, a result of a failure of government, probably. I don't really know. Something will take its place. There's always a vacuum and it will always be filled. It is an absolutely stunning, beautiful country, by the way, too. I've, uh, I've never really heard too much about Haiti other than it being the butt of a lot of jokes. And it is a beautiful country. You should consider touristing there. Just kidding. Don't do that. It is beautiful, though. Check this out. But don't go there. But maybe go there one day. But not right now. Don't go there right now. Unless you want to. That's fine. You'll probably need about 600 grand to leave. So, once again, he hasn't uploaded his own video on this with his full account of what happened. I assume it'll be f***ing insane and absolutely legendary. But he did call Sneeko, friend of the show, and he gave him some insider details and information. Yo, the, the first word they taught me when they kidnapped me, they said pose. I'm like, okay, pose. They're like, yeah, that, that means chilling. That's what they said. Chilling. They had like one guy who speaks English. Chilling. The first word they taught him was pose, which means chilling. They told him they liked him, and that's why they didn't put a bag over his head. As they're driving me, they're like, uh, they're, they're like, uh, we, we like you. That's why you don't have a bag over your head. I was like, oh, thank you very much. What a very low bar. <laughs> This part is actually hilarious. They asked him if, if there was any family he could call to negotiate ransom, and they were nice enough to let him call his brother instead of his mom because his mom would die if she found out her son was kidnapped by a Haitian gang. They go, do you have any family you can call so that you can negotiate your ransom? And I go, I do have family. They go, you're going to call your mom or your dad? I said, no, I'm not going to call my mom. She'll have a heart attack. I'll call my brother. And they go, we want to call your parents. I said, no, no, you don't understand. My mother will die. If you call my mother first, she will die. That's fair. I would not want my mom to find that out either. He says that he had to be friendly with the gang because he was alone and was with 10 armed men. And it's stupid people criticizing him for being friendly with the gang, which <laughs> that makes total sense. And they took a few videos with me where I'm very excited. That's why you see some people on socials going, oh, he wasn't kidnapped. He's just chilling with the guy in his house. Yeah, well, I'm surrounded by 10 dudes with guns in the middle of the desert of course i'm gonna be friends <laughs> do people criticize anybody for talking with anyone it makes a lot of sense to be friends with people who are actively trying to kill you dude stand your ground stand up for what you believe haven't you heard the song by aaron tippen it says you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything you've got to be your own man not a puppet on a string it's fair for him to be a puppet on a string here because it's a gang and he was kidnapped he also says that landmo takes videos of all the people that they kidnapped Le the dude literally took a video and uploaded it like the dude literally took a video like he does with all his captives and uploaded it. he dressed me today in fake fendi i look like a woman and he and he gave me new shorts he goes take off all your clothes you're wearing this and he sat me on a couch and he made a video with us today then arab says that this gang leader lanmo soju aka joseph <laughs> a man wanted by the fbi for a million dollar reward for his capture cooked goat for him on the 10th or 12th day that he was there either way it doesn't matter he was friends basically with him yeah at one point he cooked for me was it good on like day 10 he on day 10 he brought us some goat that he had cooked for us Day, day 12, I think. Day, day what a strange situation. And also, he let him go without ransom, which is weird, too. Now, on to maybe the only guy crazier than Arab. Miles. Lord Miles. Miles Rutledge. So it's 9.45 p.m. in New York City, and I'm officially homeless, guys. I cannot get into this door again. Nope, I'm homeless. So I've got about two or three nights on the streets. I'm going to see what I'm going to have to do to survive. I've got no food, no water. A 24-year-old baby boy who is English, maybe the only cool British person to have ever existed. He was captured by the 
and, and spent eight months with them and created YouTube content out of the entire experience. It's crazy. Crazy. He's the last great British explorer, genuinely. He's pals with Andrew Tate. He's mountain man people. Like, what do they know about the West? What do they know about the West as a whole? What do they think about life is like here? Do they do they like the idea of life here? What do they think about the West as a whole? Oh, yeah, so, so I usually go to them and ask about some common ground. Basically. You know who they say? They say Andrew fucking Tate. I'm like, you know Andrew Tate? And they go, yeah, yeah. They say, top G, top G. Yeah, just go to Afghanistan. He interviewed them. That's pretty chill. Miles Rutledge, is that how you say it? Rutledge? Absolutely, man. Also known as Lord Miles, is a British student and vlogger known for danger tourism, which is where you go to the most dangerous places on earth. His reasoning for traveling to Afghanistan is because he didn't need to be vaxxed to go there and just wanted a vacation, which is epic. We can all relate to this. We, I didn't want to get vaccinated. And it was the only country in the world where you didn't need the COVID vaccine. So I thought, you know, I need a holiday before the job I'm going to start after uni. I was going to go into banking. It was, it was a shit job. So I thought, I'm going to pop down to Afghanistan. I'm going to get my adrenaline uh, bump. Not, not thinking the whole country was going to fall apart around me. He also got himself a visa by making his own tourism company, which is fucking mind-boggling. The way I got the visa was I went there and I created my own company. And I put myself down as a tourism company and said I was giving my... Uh, I wrote on the letter... I, Miles Routledge, and giving myself a tour in Afghanistan. So I invite myself to move to Afghanistan. And then the Dubai, uh, sorry, the, uh, the London office said, hey, we need, we, need a, we need a reason for your travel. We need, we need a document. So I just got an A4 piece of paper and just wrote fun on it, slipped it over, walked out, and they approved it. This guy has done some really, really crazy shit. Before we go into too much detail on Miles' experience, the I want to get you a good understanding uh, of this fella and who he really is because his fucking balls are big. They're huge. They're gigantic. His first taste of danger tourism was back in 2019 when he was like 12 or 13 years old and he explored Chernobyl during winter on vacation with one of his friends. Uh, ends. I'm just outside the uh, sarcophagus that covers the original sarcophagus from a few years back. So we built over again and then now we've got this lovely little dome over here. Fortunately, doesn't look like there's any way to sneak in, guys. Goofy Chernobyl tour before the invasion of Ukraine. He did it again. He went to Snake Island in Brazil, which is cool. It's been declared uninhabitable. Naturally, he decided to go. So we're just taking off right now on the boat, and we're going to go all the way. People are looking at us, having no idea. We're about to go to one of the most dangerous islands of the world, Snake Island. It's also illegal to go there, so the Coast Guard could have arrested him. I'm someone who doesn't do things that are illegal. I'm a giant pose. All right, guys. Not being chilling, but also, but like actually a huge, huge, uh, I'm a huge weakling. Miles also took metal and medieval armor to protect himself on the island, which is fucking awesome. What I'm going to do, guys, just to make it extra tight, that's not too bad to walk in. Okay, so we need to protect the back as well. So this is half protected, but I need to protect here too. So there's only one way to do that, and there's some padding just over here. I should put these on first. In case you were wondering, Afghanistan wasn't his only time being detained or arrested or held against his will. He was falsely imprisoned in Kenya during a 750 mile charity walk from South Sudan to Kenya. He was able to escape, so he's probably still wanted by the Kenyan police. He posted about his police interactions on Twitter, and I'm not sure, they, I think they've been deleted. It's fucking crazy though. There's another tweet of him comparing the to the Kenyan police. He hates the Kenyan police, man. They're kind of the and of Kenya. Miles also, in case you were wondering yet again, illegally crossed the border into Texas, which is pretty baller, pretty badass. Hey, it's Lord Miles here. I'm at the Mexican border, and the Mexican border trade for human trafficking has gone up from $500 million in 2018 to over $13 billion in four years. Very investigative in nature, all right, guys? Very educational while heavily risking his freedom. Getting the cab back, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna get picked up with the smaller results. We're gonna have to walk basically along this all, all the way, way all the way back. He watched people cross the border with children uh, and just showed how easy it is to 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 cross the border. Oh man, this is gonna go bad. I, I can feel it. This is not a good moment. I got kids as well. Let's see what happens. 
I don't know if I should say this. One of our editors was loosely involved with this with this happening. Miles was also on the front lines in Ukraine, which caused a bit of online drama. Obviously, the, the conflict where anything you do will cause drama, especially if it's something that's being seen by a lot of people and is considered bad, like exploiting a war, kind of, right? Like it makes sense. People get upset by that kind of shit. Overall, I think all these guys are doing more good than they are harm when you compare it to like most other content creators because it's more of like an insidious sort of Oh, it's fine. It just seems innocent. These guys are just doing insane shit that nobody's really going to follow and, and, and do. They're really providing a unique insight that you cannot get anywhere else. Genuinely. You can't find content like this. It's fucking insane. And you do learn. In spite of the whole, like, YouTube vlog type atmosphere, you learn a lot of stuff. You see how stuff really is when there's just a, a, a crazed... YouTuber guy out there on the front lines doing insane shit. Now, should his spot have been saved for a refugee trying to flee a war? Probably. But like I always say, a broken clock's right twice a day. There are a few real journalists on YouTube, a few real content creators who are also journalists. And I think Miles is one of them. This from the ground reporting is just him sitting in his room reading tweets. There's this no scenario over there. Hey, look, those receiving. people are trying to look at Which could mean one in So how did all this begin? You understand who Miles is a little bit here. How did the Afghanistan arc begin? In 2021, as you might expect, Miles Googled the most dangerous countries to visit and he decided that Afghanistan was his place. It was a great place to go because America was pulling all of our assets out of the region and the Taliban was filling that vacuum or they were expected to in August of that year. That shit was insane, by the way. Now, you may ask, why am I in Afghanistan? Well, that's a really good question. During COVID lockdowns, Afghanistan was the only country open without a vaccine mandate, so I just went. He planned the trip and he landed in Kabul, Afghanistan on the 13th of August. And on the 15th of August, Kabul was taken over by the and he was in a bit of a pickle. These are his own words that were shared online as he was giving his friends and family updates. By the way, he wasn't called Lord Miles until this. He bought a $15 gag gift, allowing him the legal right to add the Lord title to his name, thinking that that might help his case when negotiating with the Taliban. That's why he's called Lord Miles now. It's pretty fucking funny. Miles is also a devoted Christian and wanted to originally visit Afghanistan to learn the experience for himself and also give himself the opportunity to directly provide charity or assistance to the people who are in need there because there's a lot uh, especially in 2021. Shit was insane when the Taliban took over. In fact, when people were raising money for him and trying to help him escape the Taliban in Kabul, he asked people to donate to other charities instead because he was just prepared for death. He had completely accepted it. I mean, he, he got himself into this situation voluntarily, obviously, so it sort of makes sense. Balls of steel. I've got to say, I wouldn't do that. I'm scared. I'm uncomfortable just filming this video. Luckily for Miles, though, his first visit to Afghanistan, he escaped. On August 17th, he was evacuated by a British army plane. And then a year later, less than a year later, he decided to go back to Afghanistan to build a, 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 a some rapport with the, the Taliban there. He wanted to build friends with them. So it all begins in February of 2023 when my two friends and I were having a goofy lads holiday trip to Afghanistan. For them, it was their first time, but for me, it was actually my fifth time in Afghanistan. But joke's on him because he spent eight months in a Taliban prison and he's been posting content for a while now as recently as two weeks. Absolutely insane. He shot guns with Taliban members who were previously wanted by the United States. Hey everyone, it's Lord Miles here. I'm in Afghanistan on forged documents going to meet a black market gun runner who was previously wanted by the US for five years. Which isn't that hard if you're in the Taliban, it's pretty easy to be wanted by the United States. I'm in yeah. here. Yeah, firing. Fine? Yeah. <laughs> While he was visiting Afghanistan for the fifth time with some friends, he wanted to open a gold mine, but he didn't have the right permits, which caused him to be arrested by the Taliban. This adventure to Afghanistan, however, was something different. I wanted to start a gold mine, as you casually do, but I didn't have the right permits or the equipment to do that. I went to the potential mining site in Afghanistan with a f without a few permits, and that was the crime I committed. Shit happens, I admitted my mistake, and I, it happened basically, oopsie. So this is his fifth time 
in 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 Afghanistan. For them, it was their first time, but for me, it was actually my fifth time in Afghanistan. So for anyone who's not familiar with my adventures, I've been to Afghanistan during the fall of Kabul by accident, and I became the biggest seller of Taliban merch in the West. Then I've been shooting with the Taliban for a YouTube video, among some other business ventures and just general tourism. Apparently, one of his friends that was also best friends that was also arrested at the same time was released early by the team because he snitched on Lord Miles and said that he was probably a spy. Judas moment. So on day 13, my two friends were released back to England with one friend really acting icy to me. Then I found out my best friend told the Taliban that I might be a spy, which threw me under the bus trying to save his own skin. See guys, I'm not Mossad Miles, I'm simply Lord Miles. I'm not fed. I felt so bad that my best friend of four years screwed me over. I was really destroyed, I've gotta be honest. Much like Arab, he befriended the How the f did he do that? Well, the Commanders gave him an M16 to confirm whether or not he was an American soldier or a spy or whatever the f and they asked him to check if it was loaded and instead he pointed it at a commander and pulled the trigger and they all thought it was funny. It was because they have a great sense of humor apparently. I turned the safety of the weapon off, I pointed the barrel at the roof of my mouth and click, nothing. So I tried again, made a face of gosh darn it with a Taliban watching, then pointed the gun of a Taliban commander, click, it wasn't loaded. I had no way to know if it wasn't loaded or not, but I reckon they wouldn't give a loaded weapon to a detainee. Regardless, they burst out laughing. It definitely broke the ice with the Taliban. He was then given Western foods and snacks, a TV and an Xbox. All things that I think are illegal. Because I had some money on me too, I can give some to my Taliban servants and go, hey dude, can you fetch whatever I want from the market? They would get all the movies on a USB stick. Of course I was allowed internet for security reasons, but they'd fetch me anything I wanted. I got Western snacks, I got fairy lights to stuck them around my room, and uh, I also got an Xbox and a TV. It was a good setup basically. I was chilling. He even watched Breaking Bad, the greatest show of all time with Servants. And slowly, I got closer to the Taliban servants in the guest house. We would watch Breaking Brad together with so Parsi and uh, Pashtu subtitles. So when I shaved my head, I was called Jesse for a week straight. I wonder if the hated Skylar as much as I did when I watched that show, because I hated that bitch. And uh, and her uh, her boyfriend, what's his name? Shit, I can never remember his name. The guy who falls and dies. What's his name? Toby? Todd? Tim? Ted! That's it! Yes! I can I can just hear tens of thousands of people watching this screaming Ted <laughs> to their phones. Ted! It's Ted! Uberbell! Ted! Ted! Oh! They would chase after each other with AKs and PKMs. Basically nerf fights, but with real guns. Pretty funny. One day we had a water fight, another day we played volleyball, we even arm wrestle. Once I chased them around with some, one of their AKs, one time they chased me around with a PKM. You know, it's uh, just typical holiday stuff in Afghanistan. Miles also said that there was another American there trying to join the team, but he was such a degenerate that they threw him to jail immediately, which is so funny, bro. That is crazy. We had an American schizophrenic here. Eventually, he started ch uh, ch chimping it in and out, threatening to kill all the guards because they weren't true Muslims like him. Then he sucker punched one of the and roaring, I'm out, I'm out, white people. He rightfully got put in isolation because he was just straight up insane. Little side note, by the way, the fellow that they threw in jail was apparently trying to marry a five-year-old child and thought Joe Biden was trying to kill him, according to Miles. I would talk to him. It turns out he came to Afghanistan to marry a five-year-old girl so he can get Afghan citizenship. And he was in Thai prison a few years back for soliciting sex from an eight-year-old girl. He also had delusions believing he was Michael Jackson's long-lost son and was worth a hundred million dollars, but Joe Biden was personally plotting on his downfall. Miles also alleged met some CIA agents, pretty pretty chill. Some Afghans were hired by the CIA to gather intelligence. So when I entered the guest house and saw them, they would always straight up tell me who they were, uh, what their mission was, and ask me if I had a contact with the outside world using my laptop. Again, staying away from those types. I'm not a spy, but those people generally were. And some of those men actually spent six months with a guest house so they weren't put there just as a plot. I don't know if they were genuine or they were just guys pretending or whatever. Miles seems convinced that they were genuinely working with the in case you were wondering if Miles ever put together a pitch deck or gave a presentation Shark Tank style, he did. He presented some ideas to improve tourism in Afghanistan and other business ventures. I assume f***ing gold mines. I don't really know. Every week or so, I would meet up, meet up with a kind commander in the headquarters and have a picnic with him, discuss business and Afghanistan in general. I discussed my ideas for the nation, opening a gold mine and improving tourism amongst other things. It got so good to the point where I actually had a pitch deck formed, a fancy PowerPoint document for business pr propositions basically, and I put it together on my laptop whilst in 
custody and I presented it to the ministers of the government in the conference room. I had a laser pointer and everything. It was quite fun sitting in a conference room, presenting this idea and having these men take notes. Miles was only supposed to be in custody for six months, but he got an extra two due to deportation paperwork taking a long time. It was only meant to be a six month sentence, but it took two months to get the deport deportation paperwork between the British and the and government. The British government did a wonderful job on my welfare checks, even though it was fine. So I must say thank you very much to the British Foreign Office on making that happen. There was no like exchange of anything. He was just left. He just left after serving his sentence. After eight months in Taliban custody, I was called into another guest house and told the next day I'll be sent home. There wasn't an exchange, there wasn't a back end deal between governments. I was formally sentenced to six months in prison. I got released when the paperwork was done. Everyone was actually very sad to see me go, which was rather fun to see. I got showered with gifts from the Taliban and they formally invited me back saying, hey, I know you made a mistake, but when you come back, you will get you every license you need. And you know what? I've been in Afghanistan now for a few days. They've given me anything. When I got back, I was formally invited back by the GDI and the wider government in England. I met with many ministers to talk about the gold mine business that I'm thinking about and also the redevelopment fund I'm putting together with a few banker friends of mine. I will say Miles seems to genuinely care about Afghanistan. He's done a lot of stuff that, there. He's trying to start a gold business. He loves the He calls them his Talibros. He's returned since being released. It's fucking wild. Is Miles a fucking deep state influencer sent by the and as a propagandist in an effort to disrupt the status quo view of the Middle East? I don't know, but everything about all this is really interesting to me, and I want to see more. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. This is some of my favorite content on the internet. Anyways, check them out. I'll have links to their channels down below.